Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today's Friday, August 24th, 2012, and I'm Darko. Um, before I started, I'm going to talk about Syria and the Middle East, and then I'm going to get into some society and economy uh, news. I just wanted to address this um, comment that I made yesterday, which was middle, uh, part of the video, Middle Class Dying Off, Wall Street Exploits, Food Crisis, Social Effects of Recession Showing. And um, I noticed that uh, there's a few commenters that... Uh, that uh, basically said, I usually agree with you, but uh, the blame ourselves point, I cannot agree because there's clear, it's clear to me that Americans aren't true participants in the political system. They can't even be rightfully called theirs. So, um, so the thing is, is I agree with that, uh, with that statement as far as uh, we don't, you know, this isn't really our country. I've, I've said that many a time. So this is addressing um, possibly new subscribers, new viewers that haven't been uh, watching that long. But even old subscribers, I think old older subscribers have been watching watching or listening for a couple of years. They kind of know what I'm when I when I say blame ourselves. It doesn't. It's not a very. Uh, it's not the simplest term, I guess, the way to put it. Um, you know. So if you if you saw this video and you automatically said, "Well, I'm not going to blame myself. I didn't have anything to do with it." Um, I'm talking about the mentality. And I put it in a comment here. I just put it in there 21 minutes ago. When I say ourselves, I'm referring to the common person's mentality. Yes, there is much beyond our control, and most is in most circumstances we are observers or witnesses to these atrocities. I'm also referring to how the powers that be are good at pitting us against each other, uh, which people usually do voluntarily. My parents and grandparents share the burden as well. But I'm talking about the mentality, the philosophy of allowing this to happen. And um, it says here, maybe we are here to simply observe and not to really try to change anything. If we use violence like the powers that be do, it backfires. But the pitting against each other is the violence, which people say, well, you got to stop talking, you got to take action. Well, you know, the best action, you know, so just talking about it with fa friends and family, I think is the best thing that we can do is try to change the mentality or the mindset. And like I said, it's sad. So to finish it up, I've offered, you know, my own solutions, which is a stateless society, which is to quit allowing people to have authority over you and quit handing their uh, your authority and your decision-making power over to them. You can say, well, I never did it. And I agree with you. I didn't either. I was born into this system. So when I say blame ourselves, you know, it's, uh, you know, my parents, I mean, they don't, they, they don't see it the way it is. They raised me completely so or you know such a way to where I don't see this stuff I had to learn it on my own it took time you know and my grandparents they didn't teach it to my parents and over and over again and they just perpetuate this quote system so no it's it may not be your system and it may be theirs uh, but I think we do have some kind of um, way to change it peacefully so when I say blame ourselves it probably wasn't directed towards you um, video test and I thank you for watching my videos um, so, you know, you're obviously not to blame if you're aware of this. What I'm talking about is, to use this word, collectively, that's right. To be able to attain this mentality or philosophy of freedom and non-violence or non-coercion, we need to do it as individuals, but it needs to be some kind of consensus. Again, so blame ourselves. I'm talking about as in the common person, the common man, the, the plebes, the slave class, whatever, you know. Anyone besides this small, uh, powerful elite. They need to wake the fuck up and stop being naive. All right, I'm done with that. Senator Luger to Russia. Let's team up. So top Republican on the Senate Foreign Affairs panel has offered Russia a partnership to take control of Syria's chemical weapons as a first step of easing tensions with the United States. So it says here the U.S. Uh, and Russia, two great powers, a lot of experience with chemical weapons, would plan together for a contingency that if Assad re uh, regime falls, which they want, or there is a general disintegration of order in Syria, which is what they're trying to get, we would be prepared as two nations to take out, take out, or take over those chemical weapons and destroy them, right, for public safety and humanity. So the real the real thing is to actually get into Syria by any means necessary. So <laughs> just if, if, if Assad actually and his forces move those chemical weapons uh, a couple blocks down away from the terrorist mercenaries hired by the West, well, then, hey, then that then that will uh, basically be the uh, uh, 
the go ahead. It'll give them the green light according to their according to their rationale to go in there and start uh, declaring no fly zones to start uh, just bombing and stuff like that. Which is what I think right now they're trying to do. Because before, remember I was mentioning about Turkey, about how they wanted all these refugees to flow over the border of Turkey and then they could declare this Article 5 or 6 of the UN Charter and uh, basically declare a humanitarian corridor in crisis. And then they could have their military, you know, boots on the ground, whatever. No fly zone. But now they're actually trying to, I think, just trying to go for the total disintegration of order in Syria, which they did in Libya. So... And we have next, Britain and France join the U.S. in warning Syria about military actions. And now Britain and France are fear-mongering about the possibility of military intervention in Syria. Joining President Obama in warning that he would not tolerate the transport or deployment of Syria's chemical weapons stockpile. And it says here, France's defense minister is saying that a partial no-fly zone should be considered. So they were saying one's pushing that for that in Libya. It says here, U.S. has plans to uh, secure Syria chemical arms and it says here contingency for special forces so that's how they'll do it uh, talk brews among nato allies of no fly zone so it says here it'd be an important show of support for syrian opposition forces including the free syrian army terrorists french uh, also said here in an interview um, said that no fly zone would amount to a declaration of war a no fly zone over all of syria said it can only be set up if there's an international coalition capable of doing it. So they don't have that international coalition because right now they have a, basically their own mercenary army inside, and they're calling it a civil war, which is absurd, right? They're trying to get a civil war, sectarian war, but as of right now, uh, they have their own private mercenary army inside Free Syrian Army's headquarters in Turkey. So even though Turkey continues to deny reports that it has been setting up bases for the Syrian opposition, for example, in Adana, it's no longer a secret that it is providing military support to the Syrian opposition. Concerns about al-Qaeda in Syria underscores questions about the rebels. So this is something, another, um, these are the two points that I want to make about Syria, is that one is the chemical weapons and no-fly zone um, little uh, point to make as far as uh, kind of a, a reason for them going in. And then Al-Qaeda, ooh, there's concerns about Al-Qaeda in Syria. Hmm, they kind of did that in Libya too, right? For the whole time, you had alternative media basically confirming all these reports saying that, you know, Al that's Al-Qaeda. The West is funding Al-Qaeda from day one. And now, after months of all the bloodshed and using humans as, you know, basically as political cannon fodder by the West, oh, now they're going to say, oh, we have concerns about Al-Qaeda in Syria. Not that we're arming them, that they've always been there, but they might, Al-Qaeda might be in there, so we might want to go in there and try to, uh, you know, stop this, right? So it's complete absurdity, really. So it's here, globalists, and see, this is what I'm talking about, are, you know, uh, as far as, like, blame ourselves. To the people that don't understand that and they haven't paid attention and will turn on Fox or CNN and say, yeah, I guess we better go into Syria if Al-Qaeda is in there, you know, that's what I'm saying needs to wake the fuck up. So it's here, globalist RAG gives two cheers for terrorism, foreign policy. RAG published a recent article literally titled, Two Cheers for the Syrian Islamists. In it, the general editor of the Neocon Middle East Forum, Gary Gamble, concedes that the Syrian government would not be in the trouble it's in today were it not for the Islamists, revealing what the West and its media houses have, have attempted but failed at obfuscating that the violence in Syria is the work of sectarian extremists, not pro-democracy activists. It's so like the caption says, you have to see it to believe it. That's right, foreign policy, two cheers for Syrian Islamists. So this is insane. It says here that this is what they write. Whatever misfortunes Sunni Islamists may visit upon the Syrian people, i.e., remember what that uh, nun was saying, that Catholic nun, about the atrocities, cutting fingers off and body parts and leaving them on the ground for people to see, you know, uh, using journalists, putting them in the crossfires, killing them and stuff like that, using, taking prisoners and making suicide bombers of them, right? It says here, any government they will form will be strategically preferable to the Assad regime. Remember what the nun said too? Before they had security, they had food, they had power, they had, you know, all of that stuff. Not great, she said, but it's better than whatever these people are going to try to instill. And finishing up in this, Gamble divulges the true agenda behind destabilizing Syria, the isolation and undermining of Iran to the east and Hezbollah in Lebanon to the west. It says here, uh, Gamble also mentions the destruction of Syria as a means of realigning Iraq to U.S. interests. 
So what you have is what? Hezbollah is preparing for war. This is from August 24th. Lebanese newspaper reports last week that the terrorist organization Hezbollah, well, they're not declared a uh, terrorist organization, <laughs> but yet, but either way, they said that uh, they had the most extensive maneuvers in history in the event of a possible new military conflict with Israel. So it says here, along with officers, observed the maneuvers of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard who came to Lebanon. They are considering an alliance with the Palestinian terrorist organization Islamic Jihad and not with Hamas, which has recently been more interested in contacts with the Egyptian Muslim Brotherhood. And then you have Iran who wants Islamic CSTO. It seems uh, that a possible U.S. attack on Iran is at hand. In recent days, Iran is making frantic efforts to find allies to repel aggression. Last week, the Secretary of Defense a Persian state made a sensational statement according to the head of the military department it's time to create a military alliance of Muslim countries to reflect external aggression to them and to protect the Palestinian people so there you go and here's just a little art Syrian re uh, rebellion described in art so repeat after me and then you have this little US guy here we are Syrian rebels so and they got people from Turkey and Pakistan and all sorts of places first with uh, you know contractors and intelligence agencies but in the news it's all about iran's nuclear negotiations breaking down without an agreement that's i mean how many times we've we heard that right could it be like what we were talking about yesterday i anti-iran rhetoric reflects u.s israeli impulsive crisis so things are bad at home people are setting themselves on fire and and uh in Israel, they um, have a lot of problems economically, and same with the United States. I just covered this, right, about the middle class. 2000s were a lost decade for the middle class. Household incomes, net worth have shriveled. So this ties into what? Daycare now costs more than college. Sending an infant to a daycare center often breaks the bank for parents. And, of course, the social engineers knew that um, doing what they were going to do with the economy, you know, especially in the late say 60s 70s after vietnam taking us off the gold standard inflation stuff like that and federal reserve policies that what that eventually both parents are going to have to go to work the wife was going to have to leave and of course with all the propaganda uh, that was enforced through uh, uh, television education universities um you know they left and now they have to leave uh, their children with the state which is the free daycare but if they can't do that then they put them in these little daycare centers they're not really free, though, the, the re-education camps as far as daycare centers because, you do, you know, the woman that has to go out and work, she's going to have to fork over a third of her income to the state to pay for those re-education brainwashing camps. A drought is drying up home wells. Families forced to adapt in a hurry. Talking about importing water, traveling miles to import water. He said it's crazy right now in Missouri. So, yeah, I said he's, he's never seen anything like it in over 30 years. In Australia, the former se uh, Treasury Secretary told AIG Forum the Australian dollar is unlikely to fall and manufacturers could, should consider offshoring to survive. So, advises manufacturers to go offshore. So, Australia to boost refugee numbers. Australia said it would increase its annual refugee intake by 40% to 20,000 a year as part of a plan to deter people smugglers. Hmm or cheap labor? I don't know. Most companies willing to hire foreign workers said most big Australian companies are prepared to hire foreign workers to help deal with the acute shortages of construction, trade, and engineering workers, a new study has shown. Maybe they can use the new carbon tax to help uh, subsidize maybe some programs to get uh, people into universities so that they can, uh, you know, get some in more engineers. No, that, that's going straight back to the banks, to the, to the treasury secretaries, buddies, and stuff. It says here, farm produce prices rise for a fifth week in China. That's everywhere. Wealth gap increasing in rural China. And another veteran raided and his firearms confiscated must appear before judge for mental evaluation or alert. So again, wake up. Wake the fuck up. Smell the coffee. So this is now a normal thing now, the Soviet-type uh, uh, kidnapping of people and veterans. Apparently, this was a letter to Steve Quayle. He says he has a, uh, information about an Army combat veteran and Christian in Ohio who was just raided uh, this evening for the same reasons of Brandon Robb. He said there's no criminal charges, no suspicions of criminal activity charge, and he was not arrested, uh, but all of his firearms were confiscated, and he has been given a notice to appear before a judge. He is a Purple Heart recipient, no criminal background, and no issues with prior VA psychological evaluations. An Iraq vet arrested on terrorism charges after jogging with a training rifle. He's a, he said here he's an Army National Guardsman with an Iraqi war veteran who is uh, basically uh, committing a terrorist act and wearing body armor while committing a felony offense, says the police. 
So please join me in part two and we'll continue with this. Thank you.